Our attention spans are getting shorter. So why are movies getting longer? Hi there, everyone. It's Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. This is lesson number 626, so that means you can find the full lesson content, including the free transcripts, at plainenglish.com slash 626. Coming up today, movies are getting longer. Hit movies are 10% longer than they were 20 years ago and 50% longer than they were in the 1930s. But our attention spans in the age of TikTok, Reels, short video, our attention spans are shorter than ever. So why are movies bucking the trend? We'll explore that in today's main story. In the second half of the lesson, I'll show you what it means to have the upper hand. We also have a quote of the week for you, so listen up for that. Now, in honor of today's topic, I could have made this episode three hours long, like some hit movies are, but I decided not to do that. You're welcome. Instead, we'll just talk about why movies are now more than ever three hours long. Let's get going. Brevity is the soul of wit. It's a famous quote in English by Oscar Wilde. Brevity means shortness. Any good editor knows that the best way to improve a draft is to reduce its length. That goes for articles, books, podcasts, and other creative endeavors even movies. This is sometimes hard for creators to accept. Creators always think that every single word they, we, write is essential. So while some of us know that brevity is the soul of wit, it's still hard to cut our own words. That brings us to today's topic. Movies are getting longer and longer. But audiences, critics, theaters, and producers all want them to be shorter. Let's start with audiences. Our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. Most moviegoers say they like short, crisp movies under two hours. A two-hour movie is easy to see after dinner and doesn't require a long commitment. It's just more practical, too. You're less likely to need a bathroom break in a 100-minute movie as opposed to a 180-minute movie. Longer movies mean more money for babysitters if you're a parent. It may seem strange that audiences want less of a product, but it's true. As the saying goes, we paid a lot of money, don't give us too much. And it's not just people watching movies that want shorter running times. People making movies also want the product to be shorter. Movie theaters can slot more showings and sell more tickets if running times are shorter. They also have more flexibility with scheduling if most movies are about the same length. A three-hour-plus movie doesn't do anything for a theater's profits, 
since people only buy one ticket and they only buy snacks once, regardless of the film's length. Studios don't love long films either. Every additional day of shooting can cost tens of thousands of dollars or more. All the additional footage takes time to edit. That's more money. And if a film has a lot of special effects, well, that costs per minute too. So the stars are aligned for shorter movies, right? As anyone who saw the three-hour epic Oppenheimer knows, that's not always true. Twenty years ago, the average length of a top box office hit was a tick under two hours. Now, it's two hours and twelve minutes, about eleven percent longer. Go back even further. Hit movies today are fifty percent longer than they were in the nineteen thirties. And that's just the average. Some of the biggest hits are marathons. Martin Scorsese's *Killers of the Flower Moon* clocks in at three hours twenty-six minutes. *Babylon* from last Christmas was three hours nine minutes. *Avengers*. The superhero film from before the pandemic, also three hours. Crowd pleasers like action movies and sequels used to be reliably short, one hundred to one hundred twenty minutes, but even they are longer these days too. The fifth Indiana Jones movie. Released last year, was the longest ever. The seventh Mission Impossible movie released this summer, also the longest in that series, at two hours forty-three minutes for Mission Impossible. Why is this happening? The answer might be with the balance of power in Hollywood. In a typical movie, the director is part of the artistic team that makes the movie. The producer is part of the business team that funds the movie, and there's a give and take with those two roles. The director usually wants a longer movie for artistic reasons. The producer wants a shorter movie to save on costs and to appeal to a larger audience at the box office. For a long time, producers had more leverage in this relationship, so the length of movies was held in check. But two trends are shifting power to the directors, and as a consequence, making movies longer. First, there's a lot of money and competition for directors' talents. If a director doesn't want to work for a producer known for being stingy, that director. Can just go to a different studio or a streaming platform. So increasingly, the directors have the upper hand. Second, streaming is now a bigger part of the business equation. A lot of people used to casually go to the movies, pick anything, and watch it. These were your romantic comedies, your mid-budget dramas. Now, with streaming, 
most casual viewing is done at home. If you just want two hours of general entertainment, you don't have to leave home for that. So if a consumer is going to be motivated to leave the house and see something, the consumer wants that thing to be worth it. And so now a lot of feature films intended for the big screen will be longer to make that trip out to the movies seem worth it. A lot of movies, even movies that are released in theaters, they're being produced with streaming in mind, so running time is less of a concern. Killers of the Flower Moon will have a limited theatrical release, but after, it will be exclusively on Apple TV+. No need to worry about bathroom breaks at home. That's what the pause button is for. I definitely think twice before seeing a three-hour movie in the theaters. Weeks went by. Now, I did want to see Oppenheimer, and I remember this exact thought going through my head. I thought, okay, but not today. I don't really want to see a three-hour movie today. Now, there's even an app, and this just cracks me up. There's an app called Run P, and the app tells you when, during a movie, you should get up from your seat and go take a bathroom break. So if you're in Killers of the Flower Moon and it's already been an hour and 40 minutes, you feel the urge, but you're not even halfway done. You, you're going to have to get up at some point. So you can open the app, run P, and it will tell you when you should get up and use the bathroom so you don't miss the best scenes. Time for a quote of the week. Here's one from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. He was an American poet. He says, the best thing one can do when it is raining is to let it rain. This is about recognizing when you have control. We cannot control the weather, so when something happens we can't control, we shouldn't worry about it. If we can't control it, let it happen, and we can worry about our reaction to it. The best thing one can do when it is raining is to let it rain, says Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. <music> to have the upper hand is to have the advantage in a negotiation. If you're in a negotiation, you want to have the upper hand. Today, in our story, we talked about movie making, and you heard that there's the director who is more artistic. He brings the script to life. The director makes the movie, the work of art. But then there's the producer. The producer works for the movie studio. The studio is the one investing the money. The studio is the one taking a lot of financial risk. So the producer, as the representative of the investor, the producer is typically going to want a shorter movie because it costs less and is more likely to be successful 
in the theaters. At least that's the way it was in the past. So before a director and a producer work together, they have to come to an agreement. They typically have to agree on the estimated length of the movie. And they have to decide who has the final cut. The final cut means who gets to decide what scenes stay and what scenes get cut. If a director has a final cut, then the movie is often longer. If a producer has the final cut, then the movie is often shorter. In this negotiation, which happens before the movie gets made, in this negotiation, the producers often had the upper hand. The producers represent the people holding the money. And for a long time, there were only a handful of studios that could fund a major film. So the producers had the upper hand. They had the advantage in the negotiations and they often got their way. But now, as you learned, not only are there the old studios, but now there are the streamers who are flush with cash and eager to spend on big artistic movies. That's Apple, that's Netflix, that's Amazon, and others. So now, a director who wants to make a long, artistic, three-hour movie, that director has more choices. And because he has more choices, it's usually a he, he has the upper hand. The director now can tell the producer, I want to make a three-hour movie, and if you don't like it, I'll go somewhere else. The producers had the upper hand before, back when there were fewer studios that could fund movies. Now, the directors have the upper hand because they can choose from many studios. There was just a big labor strike here in the U.S., the major auto workers union went on strike against three big American car makers. The union specifically targeted the most profitable factories for the strike, and they had a very effective public relations campaign at the beginning. They were looking for the upper hand. They were looking to gain an advantage in the negotiations. And then President Biden, in a very unusual move for a sitting president, took on the side of the striking workers. I think the way the union managed the strike gave them the upper hand. They had the advantage in the negotiations. Now, you might be wondering, if the upper hand is the advantage, is the lower hand the disadvantage? And the answer to that is no. There is no such thing as the lower hand. You either have the upper hand or you don't. Well, that's all for today, Monday, November 20th, 2023. Do you know what's coming up this week? It's coming up. Black Friday is this Friday. That means American Thanksgiving is this Thursday. And before you know it, it will be 2024. Now, if you are listening to this before Black Friday, 2023, then I want you to pay attention to your emails 
and pay attention to this podcast feed because on Friday, on Black Friday, I am going to tell you what we are doing for Black Friday this year. It's going to be a great way for you to upgrade your English with us, but it's only going to be available from Friday to Monday. So pay attention. Now, I can't say what it is just yet because JR and I are putting the final touches on now, but pay attention right here in your podcast feed on Friday. I'll make the announcement in a special episode. Sound good? All right. We'll be back on Thursday with a new topic. See you then.